Toyota four-wheel drive vehicles are very much part of the modern transportation scene. Already established in the commercial world, the development of the recreational market has led to people from all walks of life using them at work and play. Driving a four-wheel drive vehicle safely over all terrain requires skill, observation and experience. It's beyond the scope of this film to cover all the techniques of four-wheel driving. However, certain situations arise more frequently than others. And so, using skilled and experienced operators, this film will attempt to demonstrate how to handle different types of conditions, how to care for your vehicle, and how to get out of a situation where it's trapped or bogged. Toyota four-wheel drive system has two drive shafts and differentials operating through a transfer case. The engine power is delivered to all four wheels and the transfer case also enables the driver to select either high or low range. In two-wheel drive, the power is applied through the rear drive shaft, but the front drive train components are being turned by the wheels, so many operators fit freewheeling hubs. These can be set in the free position, which disengages the front wheels from the drive train so that the drive shaft and diff are not being turned by the vehicle's momentum. This reduces wear and tear on these components, cuts down noise and improves fuel economy. However, you must remember to lock the hubs before using four-wheel drive. In two-wheel drive on unsealed roads, it may be desirable to change to four-wheel drive high range, and this can be accomplished at cruising speeds. Four-wheel drive high range uses the same gearbox ratios as two-wheel drive and supplies extra traction on the sand of the coastline, on the muddy trails of the rainforests and in the snow of the Alps. However, changing from high range to low range should be done when the vehicle is stationary. The lower gear ratios selected deliver the engine power with more torque to the wheels for when that extra power is required for steep slopes, rocky ground, and creek and river crossings. Changing from high to low range can be affected while moving slowly, but this does need practice and experience. Toyota four-wheel drive vehicles are extremely rugged and designed for maximum four-wheel drive performance. Features like short front, and rear overhang, coupled with high ground clearance to straddle rocks and snags, have made them among the most popular four-wheel drive vehicles in the world. This dry riverbed demonstrates the Land Cruiser's performance over rocky ground. This is tough for bidding country that could easily damage the strongest vehicle unless approached in the right way. Every piece of rough or difficult ground should be checked to see that there is a route through it and that it is feasible for your vehicle. Like experienced Land Cruiser drivers, form the habit of checking the path ahead for obstacles and possible problems. It's precautions like this that will save you time and effort and may save your vehicle from damage that could immobilise it. Building up holes and low spots will make a better road surface for your Land Cruiser to run on. Select four-wheel drive low range, use the throttle sparingly and allow the vehicle to creep over the rocks under the combined force of engine and gearbox. Drive on the high spots to avoid bashing the lower parts of the vehicle like the diff housing and suspension. Loose rocky ground and steep slopes in the natural wilderness area of Tallering Peak form the backdrop to this Toyota Hilux four-wheel drive as it eases its way along in low range. By 
by using small amounts of throttle. The driver is being gentle on his vehicle and, just as important, he's being considerate of the surface on which he is travelling. A steep rocky track in New South Wales. And a Land Cruiser driver is taking it easy to make sure of not damaging his vehicle. Using four-wheel drive low range to increase the braking force of engine compression, he picks his line down the slope, keeping to the high points so as not to snag on the rocks. Even with the best wheel in the world, you can still high center a four-wheel drive vehicle if a wheel slips off a rock. A useful piece of equipment in this situation is a high lift jack, but you can still get free by using the jack supplied with the Land Cruiser. First of all, build a bed for the jack to sit on and it's not a bad idea to carry a piece of solid timber to place between the head of the jack and the wheel hub. After lifting the wheel and suspension free of the obstruction, use loose rocks and stones to build up a road bed under the wheel. Lower the Land Cruiser onto its new path and you're ready to continue. Rocky ground does place the vehicle under terrific stress, so always remember to take it easy to avoid damage. When rocky ground is underwater, a visual check on foot is vital, even if it means wading through it to see that there are no holes or large boulders. The crossing is made in four-wheel drive low range, at a slow, steady speed, without dropping engine revs and without changing gear thus lessening the risk of getting water between the clutch plates. The Toyota Land Cruiser is admirably suited to handle water crossings. With high ground clearance, most electrical ignition components mounted up high, and four-wheel drive power to get it through, especially if the riverbed is loose or soft. As shown here in slow motion, low range and a constant speed will build up a bow wave ahead of the Land Cruiser, which will effectively prevent water from flooding the engine compartment. If you undertake frequent and regular water crossings, it's wise to have your vehicle properly equipped. And it's also a good precaution to check your vehicle after every water crossing and to have it serviced when a trip is completed. If you're a member of a convoy, allow the vehicle ahead of you to complete its crossing before proceeding. Then if the first vehicle gets into trouble, you won't be trapped behind it in midstream. A causeway, with its firm, even base, is probably the best way of crossing a river, and you use the same driving techniques as we've just seen. If your vehicle is fitted with drum brakes, water will get between the linings, and lightly applying the brakes several times will dry them out effectively. In this case, there isn't a causeway, and the exit point is some distance upstream. Where the riverbed is muddy or sandy, the way across has to be checked on foot and the path marked with stakes to avoid any holes or big rocks. If the river is running strongly, the scout must take precautions to avoid being swept away and a lifeline may be necessary. As for other water crossings, select low range and if the bank is steep, use care in entering the water. By maintaining a steady momentum, the Hilux builds up a good bow wave and a successful crossing through the staked out path is accomplished. Diesel-powered vehicles do not have ignition to be affected by water, but they will blow up or seize if water gets into the engine through the air cleaner. For crossings in deeper water, a snorkel is almost mandatory to prevent serious and expensive engine damage. Sometimes, however, lack of momentum combined with a muddy riverbed will mean that the vehicle will get bogged, and for the Land Cruiser fitted with a winch, the recovery is fairly simple. A solid object, this tree looks solid enough, forms the anchoring point and as the cable is pulled out from the drum it's checked to see that there are no broken strands or kinks. The tree is going to help you out of a spot so place something like a web sling around it to protect the trunk against possible ring barking. Then the winch takes up the tension and the driver and helpers get well out of the way. A highly stressed cable is very dangerous if it should break free and whip back. By the way, always leave the engine running because if it's switched off and water gets into the exhaust system, 
you might not be able to restart it. An electric winch draws enormously on the vehicle's battery. And of course, if you have a power takeoff winch, it isn't going to be much use to you if you can't start the engine. As the winch begins to drag the vehicle free, power can be applied through the wheels to assist you to get through. In the rugged Blue Mountains, west of Sydney, rough tracks wind a tortuous path through mountainous terrain, a reminder of the need for adequate access trails for fighting bushfires. The Red Land Cruisers of the New South Wales Bushfire Brigade regularly patrol the tracks, keeping them free of obstacles. The rugged tracks and steep rocky slopes present no problems to the vehicles. Steep slopes call for four-wheel drive low range, selecting a low gear for plenty of power without wheel spin. Pick a direct line to the top and swing the wheel slightly to aid traction. If you stop and are unable to continue, shift quickly into reverse and back down, using engine compression as the major braking force. Never back down on brakes alone. If the surface is loose, swinging the wheel to gain traction is usually more important. And if you have to avoid obstacles on the way up, make turns quickly and try not to get too far away from that direct line to the top. A virgin bush slope like this would only be tackled in an emergency. Staying on the formed track is essential if the natural beauty of the bush is to be preserved.